This is a story of girl meets girl. The girl, Veronica Hansen of Sarasota, Florida, grew up believing that she'd never truly feel full until the day she met the one. This belief stemmed from early exposure to sad collections of dust bunnies and a total misunderstanding of her own internal fan. The girl, Vanessa Finn of Dearborn, Michigan, did not share this belief. Since the misplacement of her extension wand, she'd only loved two things. The first was her long, gray power cable. The second was how easily it came unplugged and tripped everyone. Veronica meets Vanessa on February 7th. She knows almost immediately she's who she's been searching for. This is a story of girl meets girl, but you should know up front, they are both vacuums. She was exquisite, light, shiny, and powerful. Her crimson handle tapered beautifully into a handsome snout, one of the newer models. Veronica often overheard her owner talking with Vanessa's. She's a keeper. Sucks like nothing I've ever felt before. Those lips, man. Crazy stuff. The voice would say. Veronica tended to agree. She felt almost awkward next to Vanessa, like she was inadequate like she was being outdone. But then again, she didn't mind much. This is because, in Veronica's mind, Vanessa without a doubt, almost certainly, most definitely was the one. Vanessa's owner liked to party. As a matter of fact, he liked to party so much that Veronica and Vanessa spent most weekends together, allowing Veronica to become familiar with her mysterious new friend. The two spent mornings cleaning up the residual carnage of nights prior, witnessing the aftermath of lovers' quarrels and drunken revelry. Over time, the two vacuums began to grow closer to one another. As the parties increased in scale and mass, a single unit failed to suffice. On most occasions, enlisting the help of one vacuum only ensured the conscription of the other. And, as it always is, the two began to form a bond. A bond that grew ever tighter, and tighter, and tighter, until one fateful night. Vanessa hadn't been picking up as much that evening. The latest mess had taken its toll on her, and Veronica was worried by the constant, dull whir that her new lover was expressing. She wished her owner would pick up some slack and give her more work, but it just wasn't happening that night. After a while, Veronica's owner stumbled across the room, dropping Veronica to the floor. Hey man, you okay? Came the voice of Vanessa's owner. Yeah, no, I'm just a little hammered. Uh, ham just a little uh, drug. Let's get you somewhere safe. Veronica watched as Vanessa was sat on a nearby dresser and rose in surprise as the owner lifted Veronica to set her beside her newfound love. Hang on, let me get my phone. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do. Nobody's got the power to please me. Veronica awoke the next morning feeling weary and confused, yet giddy with excitement. She wasn't quite sure what had happened last night. Some bizarre combination of gravity and chance had culminated in a moment of pure, intimate bliss. Veronica wondered if Vanessa had felt the same, if she had experienced the same pleasure, the same excitement. Because for Veronica, despite having drained her batteries, both figuratively and literally, one thing was certain. It had been amazing. Life continued as usual for a while. The two cleaned together, sat together, moved together. Often they were left in the same room or the same closet for hours on end. Veronica felt like her time with Vanessa was infinite, but the two were never made to last.
What Veronica had failed to notice about Vanessa was that she was just a vacuum. And perhaps she had always cared more about being a vacuum than being a lover. Veronica leaned against the window, staring into the monochrome outside. Like footprints trampling imperfections into freshly fallen snow, the rift that had formed between the two had been an inevitability. She watched the snowball fighters charging past the window. Laughing and tumbling, Veronica, of course, was a perfectionist by nature. She hated seeing such a mess made on a surface so pristine. Worse still, Veronica knew that she was designed for indoor use. Try as she might, she would never be able to return beauty to someone's yard. But as Veronica watched, she began to notice the beauty in the footprints. They became less a sign of chaos and more a sign of joy. A memory of the joy that she had felt in those moments when she would huddle together in the dark with Vanessa, ignoring her very purpose in exchange for love. Maybe purpose is overrated, thought Veronica, and perhaps Veronica was right. There was no reason for her to relive the memories of a woman who chose purpose over love. And so, as she looked out the window, she felt at peace. Veronica was finally sure that there was no such thing as the one. She was pretty sure. This feels like the part of 500 days of summer where the play and you make my dreams come true. I don't usually do this, but I think you're the coolest person ever. Fuck! I feel the emotion, the giants awoken. Mm. Cause you're sick and I suck being calm when I want what I want and I want it. Oh, you're more refreshing than a car sprite. Didn't even notice that my phone died Don't remember future looking so bright The psychic said to me that I should hold tight Oh, my head is feeling like a gold mine I don't see how we could have a dull night I don't want a piece, I want the whole pie I don't want a piece, I want the Perfect, ran out just in time <laughs> <laughs>